continuing where I left off before, let's keep learning. Okay, this is going over one of the most confusing early concepts of coding. Let's go over it in a console though instead. Let's set a variable called test1 gets 10. Now if we want to modify what is in test1, a lot of people starting out think this is acceptable. It's 20, isn't it? And no, it's, it's still 10. If you want to increment what's inside of test1, you have to reassign test1. And what does that look like? It looks like this. Test1 gets test1 plus 10. I think we can all agree that test1 gets test1 does nothing, right? It's the same. It says store what's in you already. But if we do test1 minus that, we're actually modifying your variable. Ta-da! Oh, and look, they're using syntax I haven't gone over yet. Let's go over some of the syntax. So their plus gets um, syntax here, which is what we see here, plus gets. Test one plus gets five. And test one. It's shorthand for test one gets test one plus five. So if you if you don't want to have to type out the variable twice, one on the what we're storing in and one on the assignment side of the gets, then you can simply ignore that and do plus equals five. All right instructionables. We're trying to figure out how much it rained in the past year. Update annual rainfall variable to include the values from September to December. So annual rainfall gets annual rainfall plus plus plop in this plus plop in this and yeah, you can just keep adding like this. Although if the line gets too long, it's gonna be pretty ugly. So just be aware of how long your lines are getting. You can break this up pretty easily by adding another annual rainfall gets annual rainfall plus that. And do another one that's annual rainfall gets annual rainfall plus the next one and so on. But this one liner should do the trick. Give it a run. Oh, we have September twice. <laughs> Gotta make sure we do that right. Let's take October. Replace this one. Copy it back in. Give it a run. Let's continue. They are 100% right. You do need to comment your code. Commenting your code is super useful for anyone who's going to read it later, which includes yourself a lot of the times. So we're going to do uh, some comments here. Unfortunately, I don't think either of these things really need commented because it's pretty obvious. The variable names getting assigned something is, is almost a comment in and of itself, but <laughs> set city name. Um, Set city pop. <laughs> Let's give that a run. Well, it seems to not care, but yeah, um, you can tell you what, you can tell what each thing is doing. You could even do this. Just um, set city info, and then you can move on with the program. This part. code. Anyway, um, you do whatever you, you want, but I usually have kind of a comment at the top of the blocks that do something, so this is like pretending where this is the block where we set all the city information, and we can have a block of code that processes all that information. Next, numbers. You guys already know all of this. So an integer holds something that doesn't have a decimal, including zeros and negatives. 
floats are something that have a decimal. So I had no idea this was true, but yeah, you can do uh, scientific notation. So 1.5 to the power of two, slide that decimal one, two, you got 150. That's cool, I've never used that, probably because I don't use that large of numbers that often. But you can, you're going grocery shopping. Let's make a grocery list so that you can plan your budget. So we're gonna take cucumbers. Cucumbers gets, how many do I want? I think I want 42 cucumbers. All right, each cucumber is gonna cost me lot price per cucumber gets 3.25 okay before we move on anymore I'm gonna talk about how much it annoys me the way they do their variable names on Code Academy Code Academy Code Academy anyway um, I would if I were writing this program camel case my variables instead of under like underscore them so the difference would be price per cucumber I think it looks better and is just as like clean um, I see both pretty commonly but it is just the alternative way of doing it um, so you pick which one looks prettiest to you do note though that this Code Academy place is going to um, require you to use these underscores for the time being because that's that's how they check if the program's executed right. So they check for variable names, which aren't camel cased, unfortunately. All right, we got the third part. So now we want to set the total cost to forty-two, which is the cucumber value, and the price per cucumber. That's a plus sign, David. That's multiplication sign. So we have, we're doing 32 multiplied by 3.25 and storing that in total and it's gonna parse out what's in total and tell us we're doing it right. Oh, it wants us to print it. Print. <laughs> I feel like being an ass again. Uh, that's okay, I won't. No, I'm totally gonna be. Da -da 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 -da. 42 multiplied by 3.25. 136.5. And because I'm not a lazy person, let's typecast that. with all the parentheses we need. <laughs> oh, I didn't like that. What if we do this? Does that let us trick their parser? Yes, it does. <laughs> what now? All right, let's do this shit. They're going over integer division and uh, regular division. I kind of did that in the last video, but let's see how they go over it. They're wrong. So I don't know if this has changed in Python 3 or what. Let's actually test that. Let's test that. Python 2. Oh, it is a thing that's different in Python 2 versus Python 3. Now that would get a little confusing in the maths, I'm sure. But, yeah, what they're saying is back in the Python 2 days, um, if you divide an integer by a different integer, it's going to always do integer division. Now in the Python 3 days, if you want that to happen, you need to typecast the result store like that. So let's go back to Python 3. Set up 7 divided by 2. Look at the quotient. 
and you see it's 3.5 unless we typecast it. So that definitely is a difference between Python 2 and 3. Keep it in mind. All right, so interdivision is useful. It does have scenarios, um, but you do need to kind of force it in Python 3, giving you a couple more rundowns of how to typecast, make it a float so that it comes out. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so you have come home from the grocery stores with 100 cucumbers to split amongst yourself and five roommates, six people total. Create a variable called cucumbers with six or 100 num people hold six. Okay, so we're just gonna do it the Python three method. Cucumbers divided by number of people. And we'll print that out. Print All right. Got to spell everything right, David. Okay, so let's go over this program real quick. We're setting up cucumbers with 100, num people with 6, then we're taking we're doing some integer division, figuring out how many whole cucumbers there are per person storing it in here, and then printing that out. Uh, yes, this was some pretty ugly uh, variable names. Okay, and then it wants us to figure out how many leftovers there are. So then we're gonna take this, set it to cucumbers, cucumbers, modulus, the number of people. So we're doing interdivision here. We're getting the truncated integer of, of how many each person could use. And then we're saying what was left over with modulus. So it's going to do the division. And then it since it doesn't go in even, it'll divide, 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 and be like, oh, here's left over. Doesn't divide equally. And then there's your modulus. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it makes a lot of sense to me. So let's print that out. Anyway, then we just print out this really long variable name. I don't want to type wrong, so there it is. Number of people. Uh, it's num people. Cool. Oh, it doesn't want the remainder of the cucumbers of how many is left over. It just wants um, one of these to be a float so that it's... That's super dumb. But typecast. Oops. Give that a run. And we're not doing modulus anymore, so... Okay. Um... They should have done the modulus because then it would have reinforced modulus a little, but they didn't. So we're just going to move on from that. Next, multi line strings. This is a string. A pound is a comment. A single quote or, or double quotes with stuff in between them is a single line string. And then if you want a multi-line string, you can one, two, three, put whatever the hell you want, as many lines as you want, and one, two, three to end that. And you can set this up like test gets this. And then test would print out that garbage. Let's plop that on into here. Yeah, you can see it, it just does that. But you know, if we print this, it'll look a little better. There we go. Backslash n is the new line character. It's equivalent to the enter key without actually having an enter key. So, yep, interesting tidbit. Um, there are a couple use cases for multi-line strings. One is this, you want to assign a variable something that's more than one line. Um, an alternative to this would be 
with the backslash ends. Backslash n. So that's the same as well with the single quote or the single set of double quotes. <laughs> and then uh, the other use case is if you want to comment something that's multiple lines. Um, as I went over last video, you can have a floating string in your program. It just doesn't do anything. So if you have a really long comment that you want to say um, and don't want to want to put a pound at the beginning of each line, a multi-line comment is pretty common to use. Um, lots of info. A very lot. I don't know. But you, you can just put in as much comment as you want there and then continue with whatever you would normally. Fish. Fish. So um, the downside to having a long floating string in your program is it isn't overly efficient. You are just arbitrarily wasting memory to have a string there. Um, but they did never implement a multi-line string besides that, or multi-line comment besides that, so it is what it is. Um, yeah, let's see what they want us to make us do. Create a variable. IQ gets... In highlighting this, I've noticed that mine has a space here, while theirs does not have a space here. I find that immensely frustrating, and I think early users would find that pretty frustrating too. Okay, Code Academy, you shouldn't give a crap if there are empty spaces in here at all. So I would I would make your parser a smidge bit better. It wouldn't be that hard. You would just need to loop through each line and do a strip statement. You could write it in like 15 lines of code. I don't know how many people would get stuck here with little spaces in weird places, but it's a waste of everyone's time, so moving on. Booleans are another variable type, and there's also something called Boolean logic that we can go into a smidge bit as well. So let's plop over into this console and do true, false. All right, those are the two Boolean expressions that exist. We can store them. True gets true. False guess false. So I have a variable named true that holds the Boolean value of true. Um, I hope that's not too confusing. They are just arbitrary uh, vi uh, variable names. I could just put false two here as well. That's not a problem. But. Um, something I couldn't do, or something you shouldn't do, is put a capital F there, because that's just weird. Um, don't use... There are certain things you should just not use as variable names, and true and false is one of them. <laughs> Alright, one of the most common things you're going to use booleans for are if statements. So you say if some boolean statement... So let's just do true print i. Okay, of course it printed high because if true is true, but we could also have done if false or true and print high still says high. So it's saying if this is set to true or if this is set to true. And note it will check both but it will short circuit. So if this was true, it would never check this because it's it's looking for one or the other. It can be both, but it doesn't give a damn if it's both. So if we wanted it to be, if we want true and true, we'd have to do if false and true. Print i, and that does nothing. Oh, let's do something cooler. If Oh, let's do this. Test gets 12. If test is greater than 6, print i. And since 12 is greater than 6, this Boolean expression is evaluated as true. 
So it comes out saying, if true, print high. But if we set test to four and rerun the above expression, it doesn't do anything. Um, I'm sure it's going to go a little bit deeper into Boolean expressions, so let's just keep eating up whatever they say. This is a really weird example. They're asking us to read this and see that this person is 21, and then because they're 21, age is 12. Guess false. Is that all we're doing here? Okay, very loose touch on Boolean expressions there. This slide is almost exactly what I've done uh, before playing in a console. It's talking about typecasting. So in this line, age is 13. I am the age uh, stringified, years old. <laughs> That's super ironic that they use that example too. Okay, um, let's just skip down to whatever it's making us do create a variable called product that contains the result of multiplying the float value of float 1 and 2. <laughs> How is that hard? Multiply is a star, plus is a plus. Really ought to get that right, David. Okay, now it wants us to create a large string that has the data this, but where that is a string like this. Ta da! And because I want to see that, we run that. Ta da! It's 10. And since I'm terribly interested to see their parsing abilities, boom! Run. It seems to not care about that. Pretty cool. Let's just move on, though. <laughs> All right, so we've looked at a bunch of stuff. Um, let's just do their test. Why not? Um, create a variable called skill completed. Set it equal to some Python syntax. And then run. And then stage two, create a variable called exercise is completed and set it equal to 13. 13, don't forget to delete this backslash. Points per exercise gets five. It's a minus. Uh, okay. Create a variable called point total and set it to 100. Update total point to be what it was before plus the result. What? Update total point to be what it was before plus the result of multiplying exercise completed and points per exercise. We initialized total points here to 100. Update total points to be what it was before uninitialized plus the result of multiplying exercise completed and per points per exercise. Um, I'll be honest, their directions here are pretty bad. Pretty bad. I don't even know if this is what it's looking for. Yeah, okay. 
it wants a base total of the points. So I'm just totally gonna fudge this. And just because I like cleanliness, I like to put parentheses around the things I want to execute first rather than letting it happen automatically. So we're going to multiply these two and then add 100. points per exercise. We're going to add a comment here that says this shit. Boom! There's your comment. Happy with that? Print a string to the console that says I got whatever points. Okay. Print. I should show you some of the cool ass Python 3 syntax for printing out variable names in the level of strings. It's pretty awesome. Do that another time though. Print I dot str point total plus and a space points exclamation mark. That should do it. 165 points. Alright, well, that seems like a very good stopping point. Thanks for watching. Bye.